riders will often search to find the right cue to ask their horse to do a particular movement. But we have to remember that the horse doesn't automatically understand what the riding aids mean. The riding aids and our communication with the horse from the saddle is really a process of training. In the following clip, Angelo Teletine, PhD of equine behavior, is going to explain how horses learn what the riding aids mean and how to teach your horse to have and to maintain good self-carriage and movement. There are no predisposed behaviors attached to any of your aids, okay? Contrary of what a lot of people say, think, and they'll say, do this and you get that, do that, then you get that, okay? So having said that, so what, 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 what is in reality paramount and what is happening is open conditioning sequence. You start applying a pressure with your hands and your leg, and once you feel that you have the right behavior, you just soften your pressure. You can literally, instead of even at one point when your horses knows you and they're well trained, you don't need even to release, you just tense and relax. They'll feel the relaxation movement and they'll stay self-carriage. They'll stay and repeat that movement, even if you don't drop it, okay? So that's the most important thing. And you can untense your body and reward a little steps and then of, of the, your final goal and then say, and then tense right after and say a little more, thank you, a little more, thank you. So you can literally tense with this sequence, tension release, tension release, tension release, tension release while you are riding. It doesn't have to be tension, release, tension, release. Because sometimes on release, they throw in one, two, three behavior, okay? And then when you put tension, which of the three are they gonna repeat? You don't know it, okay? So sometimes to freeze that little one behavior that you want, it's literally tension, they'll offer five behavior, they'll give you the one that you want and you do release, and then stay there, release, stay there, thank you, stay there, thank you, stay there, thank you, no, 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 thank you, no, 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 thank you. So for example, if it is like back up, and you think, all right, the moment that you think, they're gonna probably root out. Then you say, no, 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 thank you. And then if they drop the shoulder, no, 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 thank you. No, 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 thank you. So by the end, they realize that uh, the only one behavior that they're allowed is that one. And then they're gonna stretch that one. That's when your pressure release start becoming pressure release, pressure release, and then it go longer pressure release and it go longer. And then you get to self-carriage where you basically do the, the cue and then they keep carrying the cue. But on the first part, you need to sort of stop with that quick quickness, okay? Having said that, there are exercises though that most likely produce the behavior that you are looking for, okay? Because biomechanically, if, if I'm looking for, no, in human, if I'm looking, if you're looking to make me drop the shoulder forward, okay, while I'm walking, you just kick my outside leg, I get tripped, and my, automatically my shoulder are gonna drop forward. Then you click that moment, and I'm like, oh, okay, so if I do this, she's gonna get, uh, reward me, okay? Yeah. But the first time, you have to provoke it. Otherwise, how am I on earth I'm, I will never try to throw my shoulder like that. And if you poke me, okay, I'll try to kick, I'll try to jump, I'll try other things first before throwing my shoulder. Yeah. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So what we are rewarding is, the final picture is, the neck extend forward, opening the base of the neck. Okay. okay. Stretch out. By doing that one, they lift their back and squat behind. Okay. So that's our picture. How do we get there? We chain a sequence of events. First, we teach them contact release. We teach them that to release from the contact, they stretch the neck out, okay? Um, 
So, so if he learns to back off, you, you, that's why I'm saying pay attention because then he's going to do more of this rather than pull out. Okay. Then we're going to add to the stretching of the neck out the lifting of the back. How? If you are like if you pressure hands and, for example, haunches in, okay, he has to do with in the moment that he goes haunches in, he has to lift the back here. So you create this lift and you reward it right away, yeah. okay? And then you do the haunching on the other direction. So you create the lift of the back and you reward it. Okay. okay, so now he's like learning and he's saying, okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. If I lift my back, she dropped the contact. Okay, so the next time that you hold your hand and apply pressure with your sit bones, he's, he might try to do this instead of backing off your hand. Okay. okay, if he backs off your hands, don't release. Enter the circle. So in the circle, most likely he steps under and then again lift the back. Okay, yeah. so now you are rewarding in multiple scenarios the lifting of the back. Angelo Teletine teaches a course here called Building the Show Jumper. This course is great whether you want your horse to just be able to safely and confidently jump across rail or if you're a competitive rider and you go around big courses and you really want to prepare your next horse or take your current horse to the next level or solve a particular problem. So we're offering a special on building the show jumper right now, just for a short time since we're putting this video out from Angelo and you can get all the details down below.